Welcome to another OMLAB tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at LFOs, what they are, and how to modulate parameters with them. Last time we looked at envelopes and how to modulate parameters with those. Now the main difference between these two things are that envelopes are a fixed modulator. There's really only one type. Um, of course some envelopes do vary from others depending upon you know what kind of parameters you're provided with to manipulate things um, deeper than the traditional attack and decay or attack decay sustain and release models. Um, an LFO rather is an oscillator. Okay so it's not a fixed modulator at all um, and it's an oscillator that we can't hear and that's why it works. It's actually operating below uh, the frequencies normally heard by human beings. Okay, so it's the perfect thing to use for the manipulation of audio uh, through sound waves, through waveforms, um, rather than a fixed modulator like an envelope. Okay, now there's many different reasons why you'd want to use one versus the other, uh, but there's a lot of crossover in between. And in those areas of crossover, um, there's an entire world of infinite possibilities. Um, and it's, it's truly remarkable what you can come up with. So we're going to cover the basics and then we're going to go over a few simple applications of an LFO um, being assigned to modulate uh, specific parameters and exactly what's occurring when that's happening. All right, so let's jump right into this. Um, this right here is uh, Native Instruments Massive. Uh, by no means do you need to use this synth to follow along with, much like the last uh, video tutorial on the envelopes, we decided to go with this one just because there's a nice visual representation here. You can actually see the waveform, and I think that that's really important. It helps reinforce the learning process. You know, you hear something and you see it um, in real time, and all of a sudden you can kind of connect those dots um, and, and gain a deeper understanding of, of the mechanics involved. So. Uh, this right here is the LFO panel um, and now the ability to control the rate at which the oscillator is, is running is pretty typical with an LFO. An amp knob is also fairly typical. Um, this crossfade curve is actually something that's um, not found in all LFO, uh, uh, LFOs. Excuse me. Um, this actually gives you the chance to move between two different waveforms inside of one LFO unit. Um, and as you can see here, uh, Massive Synth also offers multiple LFOs to work with. Um, now these little black boxes here beneath these knobs, uh, these are modulation slots. And just like the last video, we can assign an LFO to modulate a parameter just like we did uh, with the envelope. Now for instance this crossfade curve is all the way up here. That means that we are looking at this window right here. Now the now one of the biggest differences between an LFO and an envelope like I was saying earlier is the ability to add or load certain waveforms to use um, rather than the traditional um, envelope curves. So for instance this is a sine wave, this is a sawtooth wave, this is a pulse or a square wave, and a triangle wave. And you can see me moving these around. You can think of this left border as the start point of this waveform and the right border here um, as the end point. Um, now these are going to be looping because it's an oscillator. So one cycle starts here and ends here. Um, so it's not just the choice of waveform uh, that you're making here. It's also uh, starting and end points. Uh, maybe you have a couple different curves that you're mixing together with the crossfade tool. Maybe you're actually modulating between them. Um, there are other curves that you can load in here. So let's just start with this sine wave. Uh, load it up to modulate the pitch parameter of oscillator 1. Oscillator 1 loaded with a simple sawtooth wave here. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Okay, so you can see that it is started in the middle, and it's going up, and then it's going down. So the, the pitch at which this oscillator starts is actually right in the middle of the high and low points. Now, if we were to set the sine curve up like this, it's actually going to start all the way at the bottom. Now listen carefully to the difference. So you can hear that this started low, this started in the middle, 
And this is what it would sound like if it started all the way up at the top, up at the top pitch here. Okay, so let's do something besides pitch. Let's go ahead and assign this to the amp of uh, oscillator 1. Okay, now let's look at what's happening here. We've taken LFO1, the amp is off. Okay, the amp is turned all the way down. So without this LFO, I can play notes and nothing's happening. You can see my DAW's registering notes, that the synth itself is registering a voice being triggered, but nothing is being heard because the amp is dialed down. Once we turn the LFO back on, you can see that the modulation range goes all the way up to maximum volume, which means that at the highest points of modulation here, uh, it will be at maximum volume. At the lowest point down here, it will be at zero volume or non-audible. Okay, so let's flip this around so it starts off low. And this is what it sounds like if we start in the middle. All right, so let's take a couple other um, examples of common types of modulation. We'll go ahead and we'll load a low pass filter here. Um, Again, if you're unfamiliar with filters, go ahead and tune into one of the previous uh, tutorials. It gives you a better idea. But you can hear that this LFO, once it's assigned to the cutoff of this low pass 4 filter, um, that it's, it's modulating the amount of sound that is being allowed through based upon the EQ curve uh, that's set up as the low pass 4 filter. Now the the effect that you hear in there is actually resonance, which is um, it's like an EQ peak that's moving um, along with the cutoff here. So the higher the resonance, the more of that effect. Okay, so let's maybe drop this down a couple of octaves here. And you're starting to get a good idea of how like a basic wobble bass or something like that is made. Um, all right, so let's try this. Why don't we take uh, and modulate between these two X-fade curves? I'm not trying to make this into a, uh, a massive synth uh, tutorial. Just want to show off the ability um, and, and maybe the reason why you'd want to modulate more than one parameter at once with the same modulation controller. Okay, so this is the same LFO. This LFO is now modulating itself, uh, but specifically it's modulating the X curve. So um, as the LFO um, uh, dips down, it's going to dip down to this other curve here. Let's see what it sounds like. And let's reverse that. Okay, now let's put in a different curve so you can hear. So you can hear that it's kind of jumping between the two because these are two very uh, contrasting curves here. Okay, so let's undo these uh, and let's go back to volume modulation with the cell phone. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this all the way up to the top here, so we're dealing with this waveform. And we're going to set up a, a crazy random sound here. Now you can kind of see the pattern that this is following. You can see here the volume is following this exact, exact thing here. Now what if we take the LFO? Okay, see now it's been a, it's been assigned to modulate going between these two curves. So let's speed it up. Okay, obviously the lower the rate the slower the LFO is, is oscillating, the faster the rate, the, the faster it's oscillating. You can also sync it. Uh, and sync it to a set ratio. Um, you, know, you can change your upper and lower values here to best fit your project. Um, let's talk about just a couple more things here. Uh, get back to a regular sine wave, perhaps. 
All right, so we are synced. Let's take this up to, say, 16 here. Uh, so this is 16th note modulation. Um, it's also fairly common to modulate something like the uh, waveform that's being used, or in this case, um, this is actually wave tables. So these are, are samples that it's oscillating between. And you can hear that this is, you know, it's happening very, it's happening very rapidly, uh, 30 second notes here. Um, now, if we were to take down the amp, uh, think about this. This is the volume or the amount of the signal that's leaving this, this oscillator, this low frequency oscillator. And it's being sent over here to um, modulate or affect uh, which wavetable or sample is being used based upon uh, the amount of signal and the type of signal coming out. So if we turn down this all the way, no modulation. But as you turn it up, you can hear the modulation increasing. Okay, let's take this down so you can hear it a little bit more readily. Okay, so that's almost like a, a simple vibrato right there. And again, more extreme. So uh, here's what you take away from this. Oh, and we can cover this too. Uh, an internal envelope. Uh, some synths offer something like this. Uh, when you see an internal envelope on a panel like an LFO, you can actually take and assign it uh, to something like the amp knob here. Okay, you can also uh, control anything with an open modulator box. So you could put it on this X for X fade curve or cross fade curve selector, if if you will. So. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll put this back up. Now you can hear that it takes some time for that wobble to start. And the reason is, is because it's following this envelope curve. So this kind of brings this full circle back to last week's lesson about using envelopes to modulate parameters. There is an internal envelope here that you can modulate uh, a parameter within your LFO, which is then in turn modulating another parameter, your low pass four filter. All right, so I hope this helps uh, to clear things up in regards to what LFOs are, how do you use them to modulate parameters, and um, really just encourage you to spend some time experimenting um, on your own with these things. Um, in my opinion, it's best just to learn the basics, uh, the core ideas or fundamentals on an idea, um, and then go out into the real world and apply them yourself and learn for yourself uh, the different possibilities, behaviors, um, and, and, and things that come about when using uh, modulators like an LFO. All right, stay tuned for more. Thanks for tuning in this time, folks, and we'll see you again soon. All right, take care.